Okay guys, uh, today we are going to be talking about the seated row and how to go about executing this lift to absolute perfection. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is forget the word row. And the reason being is because most people uh, assume that a row is just like a rower's row where they lean right back and come right forward. Granted, the forward part of this exercise will be uh, a part of our seated row here. However, that full extension of the, the back, that's where we're going to cut out in just a moment, and we'll talk about this uh, in just a minute. Now, <clears throat> to set up, first thing we need to know about any back exercise is this. The weight is always going to want us to want to pull you into this position here where your shoulder blades are rolling forward. Now it is your responsibility uh, and, and to execute the exercise to perfection is to make sure that this position never occurs. We want to make sure that we're back and down and we're, we're feeling the contraction through our lat. In time, when you become more proficient at feeling your lat stretch and being able to keep a contraction whilst the lat is stretching out, then you can move potentially into this position to create full range of motion. However, for now, it is about being able to keep the contraction through your lats and through your scapula and keeping that scapula nice and stable. So, what do we know? We know that, well, the major joints at play here are probably your elbows and also your scapula. So the first point of call is we want to stabilize that scapula and make sure that it's nice and rigid and hard. So how do we do that? Well, we pull our shoulder blades back and down. So when we grab a hold of this bad boy <coughs> with our, uh, well, yeah, well, when we grab a hold of it, we pull our shoulder blades back and down. But we also want to make sure we know what we're doing with our feet. With our feet, what I want you to think about is we're going to screw in just like we, we do with a leg press, a squat, a deadlift. Okay, we're gonna screw in and we're gonna allow our, room, uh, our knees to flare out slightly. And the reason being is because we want our glutes to be activated. When they're activated, then it takes our lower back out of the game and creates more stability through our hips. If our hips are stable, our lower back's not gonna take as much load and therefore you're going to feel this where we want this to be felt, which is up through the middle of the back. Now that's another point too, is that depending on where you want or what you want this exercise to do. So for example, I always use a row to target the retraction exercise because it is a retraction exercise, right? So I want it to target the things like our, our, our traps and a little, a little part of my lats, but if I want to target my lats, I'm going to go do things like a lat pull down, um, a dumbbell pull over, or maybe not a dumbbell pull over, cable pull over, cable pull through, these types of exercises that isolate the lats. However, with any row, I'm trying to isolate retraction. I'm trying to pull my scapula back. So I'm trying to engage the likes of the rhomboids, the traps, and potentially rear delts. And you're always gonna get a little bit of lat transfer. Right, so now we know this, we now know where we, where we wanna pull. A lot of people like to pull low. I actually like to pull sort of mid-range to get that full retraction. That's just me. It's just where, you've, where you feel your, your upper back more. Again, I like a little bit high. So, feet. We're gonna bring these in knees slightly out. Now position of our hips will determine how well this row is executed. And what I, mean by, what I mean by this is we actually want to create a bit of length through our legs. We don't want to be jammed up pack with our knees right next to our, our chest because there's nowhere for us to row to. So let's get these knees out of the, out of the way but we're going to slightly flare them out so we feel our ass come on. <clears throat> The biggest thing you will see anyone do, especially when the weight's too heavy, is they'll rock back into this position here and they'll be pulling. Now, when I do rock back into this position, you can see already that the range of motion is shortened because I'm here and I'm going to pull to there, right? And if I come, but if I sit forward and I reach and pull here and get that full retraction, you can see how much more range of motion I have. Now, let's go back to retraction as well. If I'm rocked back here and pulling to there, the retraction position can't really occur. But if I'm tilted forward at about just past, so if we're 90 degrees like this, we want to be slightly forward. If I'm tilted slightly forward, I can get that full retraction, that scapula pulls right back. And there's a really good piece of um, footage of Arnold where you will see him. And when he does this, a lot of people think he's rowing, but he's not. He's getting that full retraction, stretching forward, full retraction, but he's keeping his slight tilt forward. So, <clears throat> when we do this exercise again, we want to screw our feet in, allow our knees slightly out, and squeeze our glutes on. I want to allow this weight to come forward, but again, not pull us out of this position, shoulder blades back and down. From here, we're going to pull up, squeeze through, contract, back down, reach. Squeeze through, back down, reach. 
and it should be feeling as if you are on a 45 the entire time because when you pull through you're going to get a big full contraction through your scapula. Team, that is how you go about executing your seated row. I hope you've learned a couple of tips for today um, and make sure you pass them on.